So uh, I'm Hannah Murphy. I'm a journalist with the Financial Times, uh, formerly based in London, where I was covering financial services, um, including market structure uh, and uh, online trading platforms, particularly crypto exchanges. Uh, now I'm based over here. I've kept the crypto part of my beat, but I'm also covering social media platforms such as Facebook um, and uh, cybersecurity. And with me, the best dressed uh, person in crypto, we realized we we're wearing identical outfits uh, today. Uh, Catherine, go ahead. Sure. So when I first uh, met Hannah, I, I said, you've got far more interesting things going on right now than to be talking about Binance US, um, given the beat that you do cover. But we've had a pretty interesting month. So uh, Binance US is a, a US-based platform allowing for folks to be able to access and uh, manage and grow their own personal capital. It's giving you that freedom to really take choices on your own and to figure out how you want to access crypto markets. So we have launched in September 24th and um, have had a really exciting month. So can you give a bit more detail about what exactly is the platform? How does it differ to the Binance that we know, the big name? Yeah, so Binance US is a separate company. We operate here in the United States. We're able to license the global technology of Binance.com, including some of the things that most traders around the world are really familiar with and enjoy, like the matching engine, uh, the speed, the security of the wallet technology, and uh, a very familiar brand of uh, the yellow and black. And what about sort of how it came about? There's been talk of some uncertainties around the sort of US regulatory uh, landscape, and so why carve out this US platform in particular? Yeah, I mean, I, I myself was really impressed with how CZ and the team grew just about two years ago, um, from nothing to a, a tremendous business that they have with the, you know, a global ecosystem that's really been built. It's not just a, an exchange. They've got significantly uh, you know, larger uh, uh, other uh, venues that they work with, whether it's the DEX, whether it's Binance Labs, whether it's Binance X. Um, so they've done a wonderful job at building this out. Um, but one of the things that the U.S. really demands is that uh, localized effort to be involved with the regulation. So that, that was kind of one of the things where, um, you call it two years ago, three years ago, uh, the U.S. was such a gray area on how it was going to be regulated, on what was going to be taking place. And it still is to this day. Uh, you know, uncertainty is still part of our everyday life here in crypto in America. Um, but we're, we're able to take a concentrated effort and really bring the great technology of Binance to the users of the US. Um, and then this was, you know, I'll give you some background on how it happened, was uh, I, I met uh, the CFO of Binance on a bus in Singapore about a year and a half ago. Um, so their vision for going into the United States wasn't really yet formed. Um, and this was a long time ago, and I kind of just kept talking through with them and saying, you know, this, this is what people like to trade on. You're offering order books. You're not offering a, you know, a dummy. Uh, version of how they can access these markets. You're really help, helping people get educated on what trading is and how they can uh, really begin to explore this kind of future of how we're going to be using money or, or growing money at least. Um, you mentioned sort of localized regulation. Mm -hmm. What is the regulatory environment? Yeah, oh, the regulatory environment, I think, well, definitely in the US has so many more factors than other parts of the world. So you have to be really in sync with what's happening um, at just the country level, but also the state by state level. So we've taken upon um, you know, our start to offer operations to about 37 states. And for the ones that we're missing, we are processing to apply for those licenses as well. So um, that's one process that takes time. It takes, you know, you have to have your established business. Um, and we really want to do things right. We're here for the long haul. We know how to play by the rules. Uh, you know, that, that's what we're really after. Um, it's just being able to provide the US user something that they've been demanding for or, or mm. wanting. And a lot of that is an interactive experience with your trading platform or your access. So uh, I think something that I always struggled with when I was at Morgan Stanley was the way we did service was uh, you know, very um, one way. <laughs> we were, weren't really customized to the individual user or their needs or would move on the fly and adjust some of our systems to better suit users or their um, experience. And that's something that we can do at Binance US. We can take the input from our everyday users that say, you know, this part is really tricky, um, or I'm not, it's, it's slowing down my, my understanding of how I'm going to be able to get from ACH um, to my deposits, and I fix it within 
uh, you know, our allotted time. We, we've been kind of very ear to the ground with our users and running customer support for the past month um, personally. So uh, my Twitter DMs are open. If you have problems with the account, you'll get my responses because I like to hear from you guys. Uh, so I've, I've changed so many f uh, features within our, our platform to better allow the adoption to take place. Something about um, our ACH, for instance, that's a, a quick way to move onto the platform for no fees for withdrawals and deposits. And, and we had a $1,000 limit when we first started. And people kept on saying, you know, this is tough, $1,000 a day, I'm trying to move you know, significant volume onto your exchange, but I can't because of these limitations. Uh, and so you know, within our first month, we've been able to lift up that limit to the initial ACH deposit can be up to five grand. And then after you complete uh, that deposit, you can go up to $30,000. So we're listening to you and we're making adjustments in order to make this platform really what you want it to be. How has that launch gone so far? Are there other things, that other sort of touch points that you might have had to change something? Yeah, so we, we came out, um, started with seven coins um, against the US dollar. And from there, we heard a lot of people say, where's, you know, we want Bitcoin cross pairs. Um, and so we launched within 24 hours, five more Bitcoin pairs uh, for them. And then subsequently have listed up to 24 pairs uh, right now, or 24 coins um, with 40 trading pairs. So. I'm really uh, kind of focused on giving uh, our users that freedom of choice. It's not that I should be a gatekeeper or Binance US should be the gatekeeper of what you get to decide lets you uh, navigate these new crypto waters, but um, you just need a dependable platform that will allow you to have that ease of access um, and, and kind of that essence of um, the experience that lets you know that you're trading on a, on a platform of your choice. So how are you deciding which coins to list? Yeah, so in the US, we have a regulatory framework that we go through. So it's our digital asset risk assessment framework, um, which goes through you know, quite a lot of extensive research and understanding. That's your own internal? Own internal, right. Process. So we have our committee right. that goes through all of the, the processes. We started out explaining that we were going to be exploring 30 coins. And so we're up to 24 of those 30 coins um, and continuing to um, look out outside of that 30 as well. Um, and so when we go through the process of that, it's really a, a core understanding of, you know, wh how is the US going to be catering to this? Is this something that's, you know, within the regulations of the US that we're comfortable with? Is this allowing for community growth? Is this allowing for new access that the US users may or may not have had previously? Um, and, and as we go through that, it's really just helping us broaden out uh, the, the selection that we can have. A huge part of, my problems when I was going through the process of learning crypto was, you know, A, the KYC was really slow and clunky. So we've improved that. It takes about six to 12 minutes to get through all fiat verification. Second of all, I, I didn't have the access to move dollars into different assets. Uh, I was limited to about a couple that were listed and you always waited for listings, et cetera. So releasing that from people's problems, I think we can really hopefully get um, larger adoption from beyond the crypto niche or the select few that are in this room, which um, kudos to you, you're already ahead of the curve, but uh, there's more out there for us to be catering to. Is it fair to say it's as much about making sure it doesn't uh, fall under certain regulation, I'm thinking about securities regulation as anything, and how do you make absolutely certain given that it seems to be still a bit of a gray area? Yeah, I wish my whole job I had absolute certainty I once had a doctor prescribe me 10 milligrams of certainty um, just because <laughs> I was like, hey, the world, you know, it's just so uncertain. We have to be nimble. We have to be, uh, you know, playing within the gray areas, knowing where the white and the black lines are. Um, but we have to be nimble enough to be able to um, keep progressing, keep innovating, keep making sure America's part of this story um, without falling behind while also uh, playing within the rules of the game. And what about listing fees? I know with Binance, who said no listing fees, but there are now these sort of long-term payments and marketing services that they appear to be charging for. What's your strategy there? Yeah, we haven't had any listing fees yet, probably because um, we've been rolling out about four coins a week, and that's a lot of coordination, and we're a very small team. So um, we're just keeping our heads down and, and being able to deliver on, on the listings that we see are fit through our framework, and once they're approved, we can get them on our platform. But are you looking to charge? 
I don't think so. The, the incentive structure of that seems a little off. Um, I think there's certainly creative ways that, um, you know, the listings model has only been alive the same amount of time we've seen exchanges exist. So if you're pairing it to how the New York Stock Exchange does things, that's very different to how we've seen crypto work. Um, so I'm open to it, but I'll be absolutely transparent when we do change things up, because um, that's how we are. And Binance have this initial exchanges offering platform. Do you have a similar vision? I, I find IEOs fascinating, and, and truthfully, you know, being able to democratize the idea of fundraising uh, is something that's wonderful for uh, people that have never had a chance to get onto a cap table and now have that experience. But the regulations around it in the U.S. are ones that would curb my ability to get a broader market into understanding just the, the bare essentials to, to crypto. So my focus right now is still, you know, this is just the beginning. We're starting. Uh, kind of the, the, the renaissance of how people can access crypto again. Um, and I really hope that once we get comfortable with that, once we're reaching a, a larger group, a different audience than the ones in this room today, we'll be able to have uh, you know, more provocative products come to market. Talking of provocative, um, I've been covering uh, the Libra story. Um, interested in whether what you think of the project, um, Facebook's Libra, and whether you would considering list, listing a Libra, Libra coin yeah. On your platform. I, I mean, I, I think that it's funny. I, I, I think it was Meltem that asked, what were you doing on October 31st, 2008? And I had to reinstall Facebook to figure that out. <laughs> um, and I was like, ah, oh, they are good for some things. Um, ended up, I, w I was making a cat dog costume for Halloween that year. So um, I can't say that I was changing the world with a, a Satoshi white paper. It wasn't me, unfortunately. Um, but I, uh, I, I appreciated that Facebook gave me that purview back. And almost, essence, it was the original blockchain of my photos of my university days. But, um, you know, we've still got to listen to what's happening in the United States. There's clear steps with us going through listing uh, new tokens like that. Um, we're, we're still in the early steps, and so is Libra. What kind of steps? Oh, what kind of steps? Um, yeah. I mean, I think we would definitely have to get a little bit more security on, on where their path was going. They've had, uh, you know, relative volatility with some of the supporters of it. Um, I'm sure that doesn't shock them or, or doesn't spook them for, for some things. But in how we're looking at it, I, I've got my, you know, I've got my agenda, and I know there's a significantly larger, and we'll, we'll uh, knock on their door to play when we're ready. We spoke about regulation a bit earlier. Um, I'm interested in if there are any particular sorts of regulation you think the US needs, or any sorts of regulation that you think uh, will be particularly unhelpful that are being sort of discussed. Yeah, we started out our, I mean, our team in the United States is rather petite versus other exchanges in the US, um, you know, in terms of the size and scale and scope. But one of the first people I brought on was someone based in Washington, DC. Um, to be dedicated to the regulatory focus. Um, and that, that, to me, mattered because we are coming out forward with our emphasis on how we will be playing within the means of the United States. Uh, and so I think the regulators, they have the tough job. We have a tough job. Uh, none of us can say one person can do their job better than the other person right now. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm kudos to the regulators. They have the same constraints I do in terms of resources, knowledge, awareness, understanding. Uh, every component where I say, I don't get this, I'm sure they're going, I definitely don't get that. So I'll let the regulators do their job. I'll follow what they suggest. I'll push the limits and where I think innovation needs to go. But um, I'm super respectful of the people who are making these decisions that will determine how this asset is adopted. And does, does Binance US have to have sort of higher KYC and AML requirements than Binance proper? Is there a... Is there a uh, we have to follow the US, the US standards of um, KYC, know your customer, and AML, anti-money laundering. Uh, and, and in order to do that, there's you know, steps that we've done to streamline that process so that the experience for the user is not one of um, you know, friction in, in that component. So having a six to 12 minute process to go from uh, not being on Binance to through Binance and uh, getting your fiat verification. So you've got basic verification, advanced verification, and fiat verification. And once you complete all three of those, $15 does show up in your US dollar wallet. So we do compensate you for the burden of having to fill out that information. And 
Uh, we also allow you to, by then you'll have access to deposit and withdraw a million dollars uh, on, the, on the platform. So um, it's worth it um, if, if that's what your, your route is. But crypto is a wonderful thing where you can kind of come into it in so many different ways. Um, and if there is one aspect uh, that we provide that offends you, there are other ways for you to involve yourself in crypto. So uh, you know what we've got to do is what we've got to do in order to be a participant in the United States. Um, we're aware that it might not be for everyone, but I'm going to make it as easy for anyone uh, as possible. Are you satisfied with your current KYC AML process? Yeah, it was really you, fast. <laughs> I mean, but, but is I that still it, a way to go yet? Where, I, where are you at? There's, with a, that? there's a. I think it's really fast compared to you know 2017 when you were getting locked out for weeks um, from exchanges on and in, in, in order to get an account open. So. Um, can we make it even faster? Maybe, but uh, I think there are other priorities for us, uh, getting more listings out, getting more states um, access, um, being able to improve some of the, the nuances of the exchange. We offer an order book, which might be shocking to some when they're first getting there, um, which it's like an advanced level of understanding how trading works, but something I feel kind of uh, quite strong about is letting people know how markets work. Uh, there's a buyer and there's a seller. It should not be a shock to you. Uh, so being able to understand uh, where you see, you know, buy, sells, the order depth, um, you know, the market liquidity, for you to be able to understand that gives me more confidence that you'll be able to control your, you know, your future of your own capital. And that's something I want to help people get comfortable with along the way. So whether we need to in the future kind of bring in a, uh, like a junior varsity version of that and this be the varsity version, we'll consider. But I have faith in, in humans to be able to adapt to technology, learn how things work, and uh, at least I want to help you get there. On sort of staying competitive in a more um, regulated environment, do you have plans to apply for, say, a broker-dealer license or a bit license in, um, in New York? Yeah, I, I often say, like, we'll get fancy when we get fancy, but um, <laughs> we, we've got so much to do that we need to just start, start on the ground level. We're, we're playing catch up from about seven years behind. So we've got a, a lot of work ahead of us just to get to the, you know, the, uh, the level of people beginning to recognize that you know, enough states in the US can operate on us or you can use Binance US on your phone. Um, so we've got to get those steps first before we start uh, anything fancy. Got it. I wondered, you're linked to a, to a company that has its roots, its birth in China. Um, it's, there's a lot of political tension at the moment, trade war. Does that impact Binance US at all? How do you think about that? Yeah, it, it doesn't impact it to a great extent. I mean, CZ's Canadian, first of all, I'll just clarify. Yeah. Um, but second of all, I, I spent my professional career learning different markets. So I started out in Hong Kong, actually. Um, I was on the Hong Kong uh, Morgan Stanley trading floor, and I wanted to learn about markets that were not familiar to me. I wanted to know how the rest of the world operated so that I could be a liaison back to my US uh, customers and, and uh, peers and be able to share best practices of other cultures that we weren't privy to in the United States. And it taught me a lot. And I also had a tour of, in London, uh, and so I saw how that side of the world worked. And I'm partial to the side of uh, you know, the East because they, they moved fast and they operated in a way that made sense with what I wanted to deliver, what, what impact I wanted to bring. Um, and so I, I think there's almost advantages to being able to have uh, the understanding of how Binance has grown up in two years to you know, be a billion dollar company, um, as well as being able to translate it into what the users of America really want. We've talked a lot about regulation now. I'm interested in how you characterize, you'd characterize the marketplace that you're coming into. Altcoins have been in a bit of a bear market. Obviously, it's been a roller coaster up to now. Walk me through how you see things. Yeah, it's really it's it's entertaining because uh, in foreign exchange they called uh, dollar yen the widow maker because it was you know wouldn't do anything and then on one day everyone would be on the wrong side of the trade. So I think it's funny that we've categorized it into Bitcoin and altcoins and are, are giving such few personalities to the market when in regular FX you have quite a many personalities in the, in the types of currencies that you have. You have the ones that respond to commodities, you have the ones that are your risk on, risk off, you've got your emerging markets, your G10. Um, and so we're really kind of simplifying it oh, uh, too, too much. Um, 
And I think there's a little bit of a generalization to be, to be played, but it's also a little bit obvious. I mean, maybe there are only two metrics right now in crypto. We are still very much in the beginning, um, not yet able to see uh, as many patterns, or they're clearly not even fundamentals. No one's doing monthly uh, data releases that give us a, a tradable factor in the market. There's no non-farm payrolls that crypto is waiting eagerly for uh, to see the expectations of. So. We have a lot of uh, market development to still happen um, before we start just broad stroking, claiming things as one versus the other. Um, and I'm eager to see that develop as more people learn how to trade, more behaviors take place in the market. Um, we begin to see a little bit more take place. I mean, your background is very much on the institutional side. Do you see Binance US moving into that space or being very much more sort of retail space? Yeah. Uh, New opportunity for me. No, uh, I, I, I oftentimes say I'm like an institutional person that's always been still focused on the everyday user. Um, I myself had to learn how institutional markets worked because I didn't understand them. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I'll fit in or always cater to the institutional market. I simply just think that there are people that, well, everyone has the opportunity to take control of what they want to do in their own life. And if you're not given the opportunities to have that at your fingertips, then your life is sometimes determined by other people. And so I think crypto really lets you take back that um, opportunity to travel, to think outside the box, to take a career that is outside of your thoughts, but will still allow you to have that touch point with something that can help you grow your wealth. Uh, and that's something that I think really strongly about. So whether it's an institutional or a, a retail you know, user, I think that need is, is of independence and freedom of choice is still an importance. So who do you consider your rivals? And how do you differentiate yourself from them? Yeah, again, another philosophy of crypto I'm, I'm happy to correct. Um, sure. I was talking with a, a video game company, and I was like, you clearly have played too many video games if everyone is your enemy. Um, peers. I, yeah, peers. Peer. Right. Who I mean, do you consider your peers? It would be entitled for me to say my peers were Coinbase and Gemini. I, I am a month old. Uh, our exchange is baby. Um, and so we are you know, just getting up off the ground. We're excited to have seen the roadmap, the mistakes, the, the pluses, the added bonuses that have really aided adoption from our, our peers. But there is a lot for us to still be growing into. Um, so I, I always kind of pause, I tell my team, like, this is just the beginning, these, these what we call mini milestones. Um, we recently hit $15 million of trading volume. And that is, we have to bring it all back down, lower our egos, lower our trading fees, uh, lower our barriers to entry. That makes sense. So a year from now, where would you like to be? Uh, I would like to see this room full of people that are not here today. Um, I'd like to see uh, the people in this room doing what they want to do. They can come back next year, of course. But um, I, think, I think we need to see different voices, different perspectives, uh, you know, different, different uh, approaches taking place in crypto. The narrative, the, uh, the conversations have been quite repetitive. The audiences is rather niche. Uh, our, our Twitter feels like a bugle that's you know, in a silo. So, I, I want us to be able to get out of that um, cage. What and do you think it's going to take to to get there? I mean, first, does it take a big company? It takes it takes a big company. Like like, <laughs> does it take a big company like Facebook to put it more on the map? That's done wonders. Um, I mean, I think well, the central banks, central you banks. You've got central banks. You've got Facebook. You've got uh, even the fact of congressional hearings being broadcast across the U.S. Um, across the world walking through simple questions that you and I might also be asking. Um, letting people see it through someone else's lens that says, maybe this isn't as intimidating. Um, we stand behind a really big pillar of let's educate, not intimidate. I think the idea that crypto has now alienated a huge percentage of users is not our fault, but also our fault. Uh, we've introduced jargon. We've uh, claimed that if you haven't been a part of Bitcoin before 2014, you're not an OG. Um, we, we've done this good job of separating people out rather than letting people come in. Uh, and I think that's something that I, my, my team, myself, and, uh, and Binance US is clearly dedicated to. So just final question as we wrap up. Where do you see Binance US in five years' time and also the sort of wider space? How does it fit into that? Yeah, my, my goal is you don't see it. It's just part of your life. 
Um, so something that is everyday part of your fold of knowing your, knowing your worth, checking your value, trading, understanding how you can improve your own life. Uh, that's something that I just want to be part of the grain. Um, so that's where I hope to see it or unsee it. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, guys. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, guys.